Hello class, this is Rebecca Battisto, your speech instructor for SPC 1017, and we are live. We have one or two people in the live lecture with me right now, so if there are any questions, then feel free to put them in the Q&A box, and I will answer them after I finish the lecture. And if you are not joining us live, you can join us live again next week. Um, I'll post the time. I'll try to post it well ahead of time, but sometimes things get in the way. So either way, you can watch it before or after, not before, you can watch it after or during. Um, one of the things while I'm messing up, one of the things I'd like to point out is that I don't want you to think that what I'm doing right now is a, an example of public speaking. I'm giving you a lecture, so this is kind of off the cuff, it's live, I don't really have any way of practicing and then going back and redoing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through my notes. I wanna make sure that I'm teaching you everything so I do use notes and sometimes I will read. I don't recommend that. I did mention that in the discussion this week. I definitely don't recommend reading for your speech because it's really obvious it comes through in your voice and it's hard for the audience to engage with you when you sound like you're reading because it doesn't sound like you're passionate about what you're speaking about. So. We are going to talk about demonstrations today. We're gonna to do a demonstration speech this week. It's due on Saturday by midnight. And, excuse me, this speech should be about five minutes long. The purpose of a demonstration is basically a how-to. You're going to teach the audience how to do something. Let me take a drink here. <coughs> Sorry. So, some of the topics that you could consider are all how-to topics, like how to tune up a bicycle, how to tune up a piano, how to make a tool bench, how to paint a picture, how to teach your child to ride a bike without training wheels. There's a million topics. If you have any questions about topics, you can put them in the discussion room. I put some um, examples in your week one uh, demonstration speech piece where I, I laid out all of the instructions on the demonstration speech. So there's a bunch of topics in there. If you have any other topics that you're not sure about, you can ask your fellow students or you can reach out to me. There are a few topics that I recommend you stay away from. The first one is how to make a smoothie. It's almost every semester that somebody will do this topic and it's a terrible topic. For one, because there really isn't that much information that goes into making a smoothie. There's like five ingredients, if that, and then you turn on the blender and then you drink it. So it's really not that difficult. There's not a lot to fill your five minutes. <coughs> I'm sorry, I have a tickle on my throat as soon as I started the video. And not only that, but for a good portion of the time that you're speaking, the blender is on. And everything that sounds loud to you is going to be amplified through the speakers. So when you turn on a blender, it's like a jet engine when I hear the recording. You don't want to do that. You don't want to make any noise. You want to tiptoe as much as possible in your speech. That brings me to another point. Make sure that when you are ready to give your speech, you have everything you need laid out in front of you. Um, I've had people do speeches where they have to grab things and so they'll be like, excuse me one second, and they'll go off camera and grab something. Well, you wouldn't do that if you were in a classroom. So that doesn't replicate the classroom, so it's not really effective. You're going to lose points for that. Everything that doesn't reflect the classroom or replicate the classroom is something that you're going to lose points for including editing your speeches. You cannot edit any of your speeches, not this one, not the next one, none of them. I'll come back to that because there's some difficulty with this speech if you can't edit. So I'll come to, back to that in a minute. I'm still speaking about topics though. So do not choose how to make a smoothie. Second topic that I recommend you stay away from is how to give a massage. We have in the alternative medicine program, there tends to be a few masseuses during that program, so then this can be a topic that's easy for someone to give. However, when you're giving a massage, normally, unless it's a physical therapy massage, for most massages, 
you have to be quiet. You're supposed to be silent. That's one of the purposes of giving a massage is to relax somebody, right? You can't be silent and give a speech. So you're not really replicating the massage or teaching people how to do a correct massage. So I've had people do this and either they are silent for a lot of the speech, which is a problem, or they whisper, which is also a problem. So don't give a massage as you're talking. And the third one, which is also quite popular, is essential oils. A lot of people will try to teach how to make essential oils. Again, there isn't a lot that goes into this, so it's hard to fill your five minutes. And once you start and you realize that you're not going to fill your five minutes, you will feel that sense of panic. You don't want to do anything that's going to make you any more nervous than you already are. So make sure you choose a topic that has enough information for you to speak on. And if it's something that is quite basic, you could always fill in with your research. You can give the history of the topic or the background or somebody else's opinion of the topic, give a story about the topic. Um, but make sure you have enough information to fill five minutes. Another topic that I am not saying don't do, but I'm definitely saying take care with all of your surroundings is pre-flight inspections. Those of you that are in the um, aviation division, this is also a common topic for you guys. And it's a good topic, but to do a pre-flight inspection, you have to be obviously at an airport walking around an airplane. And there tends to be at airports noise. There are usually planes coming in and out in the background. Again, that sound gets amplified. So if you choose to do a pre-flight inspection, make sure you're aware of your surroundings. It also can be difficult because whoever is holding the camera or the phone has to make sure that your volume is loud enough. So these are just difficulties that you're adding to your speech. If you feel comfortable with it, go ahead and make that your topic. I'm not saying don't, but I'm just saying that there are difficulties with topics like that. Okay, so make sure you take that into consideration. So that's topics. Another thing I want to talk about is um, when you are preparing for your speech, the most important thing for you to do is to keep your audience in mind. If you're not engaging with the audience or entertaining the audience, then your speech is not successful. And you don't want to go through all that you're going through if you're not going to be entertaining or engaging with your audience. So keep them in mind, and when you start to develop what you're going to say, think about, is this easy for them to understand? Do I need to review this several times during my speech so that they get it, so that they understand? Do I need to take breaks so that I'm letting them take in the information? Was I told that I speak a little fast? Because if I do, maybe I need to slow down. For this speech, there's going to be more information for my audience to take in, so I want to make sure that I give them a chance to catch up in what I'm saying. So take breaks. Don't be afraid of silence. If you're afraid of silence, we tend to fill it in with a lot of um and ah. Uh. So don't be afraid to just take a break and be silent for a second. Don't use any jargon or abbreviations. And if you have to, especially for those of you that have either served in the military or are currently serving, if you use jargons or abbreviations, make sure you explain that because to me and to the common person, we don't, we're not in your world, we don't know what that means. Make sure that you're making it easy for us. Also keep noise levels to a minimum. That's another thing I just mentioned. All sound gets amplified, so if you have to move around, if you have to pick things up, make sure you're just gentle with the things you pick up because it's really, really loud. Okay, so I've talked about what topics to choose and what topics to avoid, where to find more topics. I've talked about um, keeping your audience in mind. I also want to mention that when you're giving a demonstration speech, it needs to be very organized. So if you think about the people who are on the DIY channels, um, HGTV, or any of the cooking channels, they're giving demonstrations. They're telling you how to do something. So if they're not organized, then you're not going to do it correctly and they haven't done their job. You need to make sure that you are following a sequential order. Step one, you do this. Step two, you do this. Step three, you do this. You can't tell me what my ingredients are 
after you told me how to cook because I don't have the stuff ready. So I'm not going to be able to follow along. Okay. So make sure you're organized. You're going to follow a sequential order. The outline is in your um, classroom. I think it's under, yeah, it's under week three. So you can use that one or another outline is going to come up when I talk about extra credit. So I'm going to come to that at the end. Topics, the audience, and organization. Okay, next I'm going to talk about citations. You need to have three sources in your speech. So you have to go out and find three different people or organizations that talk on your topic. You have to be careful about how you put the citations in your speech. But there is one thing that people tend to do, which is called bulking your sources. I don't want you to bulk your sources. I'm going to give you an example of what bulking your sources looks like, sounds like. So I found this research on uh, CrayolaSupermarkers.com. I also found research on um, the artist's website.com and Dr. Philip Lassiter, who is a teacher at uh, Pixar Studios. So I just told you three of my sources, but I gave you no information from those sources. So that was of no benefit to you whatsoever. Okay? Don't bulk your sources. And by bulking your sources, I mean don't list here's where I found my information. I want you to tell me the information that you found. I need to know that I can trust you. And by giving me the information that you found, I know that you've done your research. That's where I can trust you. So now I'm more involved, more engaged in your speech. Okay, so make sure you present the information. So according to Dr. John Lasseter, oh, sorry about that, my Siri just popped up. I guess you thought I was calling him. Hold on one second, we turn that off. Um, so according to Dr. John Lasseter of Pixar University, Crayola is the best of all of the crayons out there on the market. He said that in his study in 2007 when he was comparing Crayola with the standard crayons that you get at a company picnic. So you see my point. I gave you the information. I told you where it came from. And I told you why this is important to my speech. Okay, so don't help your sources. Spread them out and give me the information and then tell me where it came from. You have any questions about that? I know that's not perfectly simple. So, if you have any questions about that, you can always call me, or you can leave a question in the Ask Questions uh, discussion. So that's your citations. Provide the details and don't fault your sources. Then that the other thing that you have to put into this speech is a visual aid. Now, a lot of the time when you're in the classroom, you would show a PowerPoint presentation behind you. To be able to show a PowerPoint presentation in this speech, you would have to edit your video, and you're not allowed to do that. So the simplest way to have a visual aid in your speech is to have a thing. So I'm going to tell you today about Starbucks and how to make a Starbucks coffee at home. As you can see, I'm a big Starbucks fan. So you do the Vanna White thing. You're going to show me a thing. If you wanted to show me a piece of paper, sometimes people will write out something and then show it to the audience. That doesn't work because everything is mirror image. So let me give you an example. Let me just reach for this book. That's really hard for you to read, right? It says happy life, but it's really hard for you to read because you see the mirror image. So you cannot hold up writing. You have to use a thing. It's just one of the downfalls of taking the class online, but it's not a big deal. So use the thing, hold something, show me a picture, something like that, okay? We've talked about topics, organization, your audience, citations, visual aids. Next, I'm going to talk about dead air. Dead air is what happens when you stop talking because you're doing the thing that you're trying to teach your audience. This happens very freak yeah, frequently, and you have to practice. So 
when you're watching any of the cooking channels, even as they're stirring, they're talking to you. They're giving you background. Um, they're providing you more information. They're telling you maybe substitutes you could put in. Uh, they're constantly talking to you. They need to do this. Otherwise, you're just watching, it becomes hypnotic, and then all of a sudden either you're asleep or you've turned the channel. So make sure you avoid dead air. Talk all the way through whatever you're doing. Also, make one ahead. So if you're going to make cupcakes, you're going to show me how to make a cupcake. I'm not going to sit here while it bakes for 20 minutes. Um, I'd love to stay with you, and I'd love to try your cupcakes, but I can't try them so therefore I don't really want to sit watching them bake for 20 minutes. So instead of doing that, make one ahead, okay? So you can pull one out and say, here's one I made earlier. When we were children, this is very common in any of the kids' shows, they'd show you how to make something and then they pull one out that they made earlier. And they do the same thing, Martha Stewart does it, you know, they show it to you, finished product, so you know what it's supposed to look like. Uh, okay, now Having spewed all of that information on you, I want to talk about nerves because I probably just made you a little more nervous than you already were. I know that this is a class that everybody gets nervous in. And even when I'm giving presentations now, I have, I, I have to give presentations quite a lot. I have a lot of employees and I have to speak in front of all of them. And I get nervous every single time. I used to run a, the marketing department for a government contracting agency and I would have to give presentations four times a year in front of 1,100 employees. And every single time I would tell my husband, I don't want to go, I just don't want to go, I don't want to do it, I hate it. And then I would give the presentation and it would be fine and I would feel great about having done it. So there are certain things that you can do to help your nerves. You're never going to lose the nerves altogether. And if you do, it means you don't care. So nerves are good. Whenever you take an exam, whenever you go for an interview, you might get nervous because you really care about the income, the outcome, about the outcome, okay? So don't discount your nerves. Don't think that they're there to tell you just run because that's, that's, not, that's not right. You can fight through them. And I'm going to help you with that. One of the ways to fight through your nerves is right before you give your speech, breathe in several times through your nose and out of your mouth, just like you're doing yoga or meditation, which I'm sure a lot of you already do. I don't because I'm terrified of that stuff. But anyway, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth really slowly. You're trying to calm yourself down and slow your heart rate just a little bit because your heart rate is probably pounding. So you're going to breathe in. Okay, do that several times. If you have to give a presentation and you're, hmm, interesting, and you're watching the person up on stage give the presentation before you, the whole time you're watching them, your nerves are building up, your heart is racing, and you start to feel the color coming up in your face. The only way to get through this is to slowly and quietly breathe in, and out through your mouth, okay? And one of the reasons we get nervous is because we're taking whatever it is that we're gonna do very seriously. So the only way to avoid taking something very seriously is to be completely silly. And this really does work. You'll see actors doing this all the time. You're gonna hate me for suggesting this, but you can see, I promise you, if you go to YouTube and you see actors getting ready for a role, they'll be shaking out their body, they'll be making ridiculous faces, stretching their faces, and one of the reasons is because they're just shaking themselves up. So you can either do that, you're going to feel really silly, but it will help, it'll get rid of your nerves. Or you can go out and do some exercise, get rid of that adrenaline, some of it, and then come back and do your speech. Or your interview, whatever it is that you're doing. Okay, those are some of the ways that you can fight through the nerves. I think I uploaded a video about um, nerves and, and how to manage onto your classroom, so take a look for that. I think it's in week one. Um, I'm not sure if it is. It's under one of the weeks, okay? And it's probably under the reading, um, the reading folder. 
Oh, and the final thing about nerves. If you are unfortunate like me, if you get really nervous and you start to feel the color rising in your face and you're, you feel yourself going red, just go right through it. Don't stop, don't say, oh, I'm so sorry I'm getting red or nothing. Just pretend like it's not even happening and just keep going. And if you're in the audience and somebody ever gets red or they do anything that's, you know, they have any physical symptoms that are embarrassing, just leave them alone because you know how it feels. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible feeling and you just let it go. Just pretend like it's not happening. If they ask you, just, I don't know, it's up to you, but I would lie and say, no, you looked great, okay? So we all need to support each other on that one. And finally, the fun part, extra credit. So I've talked to you about the purpose of a demonstration speech. I've talked to you about organization and making sure that it's in sequence, making sure that you have everything ready, making sure that you have one made earlier that you can pull out. I've talked to you about keeping your audience in mind and not using jargon um, and keeping the noise levels to a minimum. I've talked to you about citations. Don't bulk your sources. Make sure you provide the information for each of your sources so that you can get the full credit for doing the research. I talked to you about visual aids, dead air, nerves, and now I'm going to talk to you about extra credit. So this week you are doing your demonstration speech, and next week you're going to be doing an outline for your final speech. Outlines are really, really helpful, and I spread it out so that you didn't have so much work for every single week, but I really recommend you doing an outline every week. Every time you do give a speech, I recommend you do an outline. So what I've done is I've created a simplified version of an outline template, and I'm going to upload it in the week one discussion room along with this video recording. And only the people who are watching this video recording will understand what they're supposed to do. So you need to download that template you fill it out, you can fill it out by hand, or you can fill it out on your computer, and then you're going to upload it with this week's speech. It's an outline template that you're going to use to lay out this week's speech. This is going to help you stay on topic. It's going to help you stay within the five minutes that you're supposed to stay within. It's actually four to six minutes, so I guess you could be up to six minutes. And it's going to lay out the order of your speech. It's going to make it nice and simple and make sure that you have all the information that you need in your speech and nothing more, okay? So if you do that, you will get extra credit. And I'm going to explain exactly how the extra credit works in the discussion with the document. So that's all of the information that I have for this week. Um, I don't have any questions in the Q&A section, so if you have any questions for me going forward, use the Ask Discussions. You can email me. I prefer if you use the Ask Discussions box because then everybody can see it and it may answer a question that they had. Or you can call me. And if you have any trouble getting hold of me on Saturday or Sunday night, that's when I'm doing my grading. So make sure you call then rather than emailing or putting a question in the Ask Discussions box because I may not get to it as fast. So that's everything. Best of luck this week, and I will see you next week. Bye.